Okay, this time around we're going to be looking at uh, combining some of the stuff we just did in this uh, little series on in, uh, superimposing stuff. In this case we're using Blender. I'm using Blender 2.6. And I've shown you in the previous videos how to superimpose fire using Caden Live, superimpose fire using the Blender Compositor, superimpose objects using uh, Blender 3D View and uh, the Compositor. Well, today we're going to combine some of those because if you remember when we were aligning the fire in the compositor video, um, you know, we used a composite uh, node that allowed us to move the X and Y axis. But let's say you want to um, uh, drag it with your mouse, kind of like you do in Caden Live. Um, also set keyframes, which you could do with the compositor with the uh, X, Y axis. Anything with a value, pretty much you can set a keyframe for. But um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is a little something I came up with. <laughs> a lot of the other stuff, you know, the other stuff I've learned from other tutorials is kind of taking the knowledge of different things and saying, hey, can I do this? So uh, delete the default cube. One on the number pad to move to the front view. I'm going to then say um, camera and align the camera to view. T to remove that uh, panel over there. And I'm going to import uh, a background image, add image, open and I'm going to find that same video we've been using a little clip of me uh, breaking up some old furniture okay um, at this point I'm gonna hit spacebar type in plane add a plane RX 90 to rotate it on the uh, x-axis 90 degrees then uh, SX and scale it out a little bit on the x-axis because uh, the video I'm importing in this case uh, it's going to be a wider, it's not a square, it's a rectangle, but it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, for at least not for fire anyway. Um, at this point, I can probably hit end to remove that panel, give me a little more room to work here. Uh, drag this out, I'm going to give that plane a new material, bring the specularity down, make it shadeless, texture, new texture, and we're going to say image. At this point, we're going to open and we're going to find our flame video, flame AVI here. We're going to make sure we set um, match movie length, auto refresh and cycle. And uh, if we go to textured mode here, you can see we got a white plane there. Let's hit N to bring back up this tab. Go to display and set this to GLSL. And there now we can see the fire in that plane. And if we hit Alt A, you can see the animation's a little slow, but it's playing both videos. And at this point, I can grab this and move it wherever I want. I can put it right there. And if I hit F12, you'll see it renders right there. Once again, we don't have the background image because we're going to put that in with the compositor. But before we go into the compositor, let's go to our world view here, horizon, and we'll just make that black. So now when we render it, we have a full black view. So now we can go and we can do what we did earlier and use the screen effect in the compositor. So here, uh, let's we can go, you can hit control and left arrow, or you can go up here, click uh, this little menu and choose compositing, use nodes, backdrop. Uh, this is our render layer here of our fire. So you can see it renders out the image as black, but it also has the alpha background there. Um, and we're going to hit shift A, I say image here. And if we click, uh, we don't have to click open because we already imported the video of me. So we're going to click here on this little icon and choose firewood and there it is we'll press cycle auto refresh and in this case we already know from the previous tutorials that uh, this video is uh, 308 frames uh, you can find that out many different ways but in blender if you add that to a texture you can click as we did for the fire um, you know sets a number of frames in video and it will tell you how many frames there are uh, at this point I'm going to shift A and I'm going to say color mix, change that to screen. And we can drag this video down here. Actually, I'm sorry. Top video goes in the bottom one. So since the fire is going to be on top of the other one, it goes in the bottom one. And this one, the bottom plane goes in the top. So it just seems a little backwards, a little weird. Shift A and we can say output view and we can also put that here. So we can get an updated view here. Hit V a couple of times to back that up. Um, and once again, uh, as we went over in the previous tutorials, a lot of different ways to do this. Um, 
our render right now is smaller than our actual video. Best thing to do here is probably just set it to our video size. So our under render, we're going to say render presets. We're going to say um, HDTV 1080p for this case because that's what my original video is. We're also going to set it to 30 frames. And we actually turn off this right here, and that will, might speed up our rendering slightly. We'll hit uh, F12. And there you can see the fire is there, um, but it's rather light. Uh, let's turn this frack up to one, and now you can see it better. So now uh, we can render this out. Uh, but I wanted to show you at the same time uh, that you can set keyframes and move it around. We have our, our 3D view here, uh, and if we hit N, we can scroll down just like we did before and add our background image back in. And also set our display to textured, and down here change this to textured. So now we can see this. And um, so I'm going to hit, uh, we're at the first uh, frame here, as you can see right there. I'm going to grab this fire. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to hit I. And I'm going to set a location. I, I usually set location, rotation, and scale just in case I decide to change those things later. But in this case, I only need to set location. And then I can go up, you know, well, we'll just hit shift and right arrow to go to the last frame in this case. Grab it. And we can move the fire over here. We'll hit I and set that keyframe. And now if we hit Alt A, you can see the plane slowly moving. So at about this point, the fire is going to come into our frame and go across. Now obviously, fire doesn't move like that. But if you were using something else like um, some sort of pre-rendered fireball, uh, you could do this and have the fireball move along with your scene. So. Um, that's it. At this point, we can go to our render options here. I'm going to use XVID as my output, but whatever you like as far as formats. And obviously, you can adjust the, the, the encoding. You have AVIs here, MPEGs, QuickTime, AUG. Um, one of the things, and I've mentioned this in previous tutorials, some people like to export to all still images and then compile them later in case they need to stop the rendering halfway. Well, with XVID, you can stop the, the rendering halfway and continue and then just link those videos together later on. Also, XVID allows you to preview the video. You can be halfway done rendering. You can go and open it up in your media player and view what you've rendered so far, which is nice. Um, where if you're rendering still images, you know, everything might look right, but then when you watch it, the animation or whatever may not look right, and you can fix that before waiting until the whole thing's done rendering. So anyway, I'm using XFID is basically what I'm saying. Uh, we have our all this other information proper. We're going to name it. I'll call this firewood5.avi. By the way, if you put .avi, it will name the file just like you have it written here. If you don't put the extension, the dot .whatever format, uh, Blender will add um, uh, the frames. So since this is frame 1 to 250, it will name that. So depending on what you want, in this case I just want to say that, and then I'll click Animate. And um, that's it. It's going to slowly render this out, uh, about two frames a second. No, two seconds for each frame, second and a half to two seconds on my computer anyway. So it's there, it's definitely time consuming doing this in Blender. Uh, Caden Live uh, probably does it faster. Um, but once again, as I said in previous tutorials, there's, probably, there's a lot when it comes to rendering in Blender that you can do to speed up the renders. Um, uh, like under here in performance, in this case, I could probably have set these tiles to one and one. Probably would have sped things up a little bit and in this case, not affect the quality at all. So there's definitely a lot of things you can tweak in Blender and that's why you may get different results because you have more control. Uh, obviously, something like this, in many cases, doing it in something like Caden Live um, may be more efficient in some ways. But in some cases, let's say you're not in Linux uh, or you don't have a current version of Caden Live, or for some reason Caden Live crashes on your machine, because I get that from people, but I think they're running older versions at this point. Uh, Blender runs on pretty much every operating system. It's open source, it's free, so anybody can use it. I mean, so is Caden Live, but it doesn't work on all operating systems. Um, and depending on your situation, this may be a better uh, uh, way to go. So anyway, 
now that I've talked for a bit, uh, I'll let this finish rendering out, and um, at the end I'll play the rendered out video. Uh, I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Uh, there should be links in the description. And uh, here's that final uh, rendered out video. Have a great day.